everyone, Christy Tippett from Campus Rec here. For this week's AMP Crash Course, we are diving into static and dynamic stretching. So we know that stretching in general helps reduce the risk of injury and maintains the desired range of motion at our joints. However, it has been debated for quite some time now as to how often you should do it and exactly what type is best for us. Both dynamic and static stretching have their place and there is no necessarily right or wrong answer, but perhaps we need to think about how they need to be used in certain scenarios to get the benefit of them. Diving in deeper, stretching helps perform movements with less restriction. It can also help to relieve any tension in muscles when it comes to your general posture. When you dive deeper into your goals, however, you might want certain areas or muscles to have a specific amount of tension. For example, sprinters or jumpers typically have or need a certain amount of stiffness to better serve the energy return process, which correlates with their performance, of course. Now, diving deeper into the difference between the two, Static stretch is when you take a muscle or tendon to its end point or when it is fully lengthened and hold it there for a certain amount of time, which is typically between 15 and 60 seconds. Usually you hold a stretch when you feel a pull at the end of that range of motion. Dynamic stretch still elongates the muscles and tendons, but you don't hold it there. So you're actually just moving through that full range of motion. This is what I like to call movement prep. Completing that range of motion that will increase blood circulation to those muscles, preparing your body for the movements or exercises that will later come with heavier loads during your workout or competition. Static stretching does have its place in workout regimens, but it depends on what state your body is in and what your goals are. If you're sitting at your desk all day with poor posture, static stretching is a wonderful way to help relieve that postural stress. When it comes to athletic performance, most will incorporate static stretching at the end of their workout as part of their cool down when their muscles are nice and warm. Static stretching can also assist in reducing um, DOMS, that delayed onset muscle soreness, which typically takes place around 48 hours post-workout. So if you do a high intensity workout, you'll notice the next day it's not so bad, maybe you're a little sore, but two days after, 48 hours after is when you will typically get that DOMS, that delayed onset muscle soreness and static stretching can help alleviate that and improve your recovery time as well. Dynamic stretching has become more and more popular to be performed at the beginning of our workouts. This type still puts your joints through that range of emotion. Once again, increasing blood flow and warming up our bodies. Examples of dynamic stretching includes walking lunges with twists, um, leg swings, Frankensteins, knee pulls, quad pulls, hip rolls, arm circles, etc. Okay, so many, many out there. Again, there is no right or wrong answer when it comes to dynamic versus static stretching, as there is so much contradicting research out there. For some, Static stretching before a workout might help them reduce the risk of aches and pains, whereas it might hinder the performance of someone else. While there may not be a right or wrong answer, remembering the main purpose of stretching is what is critical and important. So remember that the purpose of stretching is to increase the range of motion so that we can get more out of our training. I personally like to incorporate dynamic stretching in the beginning of my workouts during the warm-up. Once again, increasing that blood flow, getting the blood pumping, and prepping my body for what is to come during the workout at a higher intensity. Um, and then static stretching I will incorporate at the end of my workout when my muscles are already warm and when I go into that elongated state and spreading of the muscle fibers, it will not affect my workout or any of the exercises that I plan to be doing at higher intensities. An example is when I know I'm going to be doing heavy squats or loaded squats with barbells and weights and all that fun stuff. Um, during my warm up, I will typically do air squats with no added resistance. I'm just going through that range of motion in addition to some leg swings. 
And the importance of dynamic stretching is, um, for example, if this were a leg and I was doing leg swings, um, standing against a wall, when I bring my leg forward, keeping in mind that the back of my leg, my hamstring here, has to completely relax in order to get that full range of motion. And then on the opposite side, as soon as I swing my leg backward, I need to relax my quads so my hamstrings can bring it up and get that full range of motion stretching that quad. So that is kind of a, a advanced level of thinking of what dynamic stretching is. Remembering that we want to completely relax that muscle to get the full range of motion. Because once again, while we are not holding it at that end range of motion like static stretching, we still want that full range of motion to get the most out of it. That is all I have for this week. I hope this helped your view on static versus dynamic stretching and that you learned something new. I'm looking forward to seeing you all for next week's AMP Crash Course. Take care and I will see you then.